Today we are checking out this Canon FD 70-210mm f4 lens. This classic telephoto zoom hit the market back in 1980 and has been a favourite among enthusiasts ever since. I've been using this lens on my Fuji X-H2S camera, adapting it with two adapters. The Miticon lens Turbo Mark II, which is a focal reducer, and the Earth adapter. We'll explore how it performs on both the focal reducer alongside checking out its raw optical performance. It was originally designed for 35mm SLR cameras with a Canon FD mount. On an APS-C sensor like the Fuji bodies we are testing it on, it has an equivalent focal length of approximately 105 to 315 mm due to the crop factor. The lens maintains a constant maximum aperture of f4 across its zoom range and can narrow down to f32. It's crafted with 12 elements in 9 groups and it has this incredibly unique design, which is a nice shift from all the standard options out there. When it comes to price, it's a great deal compared to its contemporaries. I'll just leave some links to the two adapters in the description. I especially recommend this Metacon Focal Reducer as it really unlocks some of that character which I personally greatly enjoy. This review is totally independent, but of course make sure to check out other reviews for a full picture. It's a solid piece, made of metal and weighing in at 705 grams. It's not overly heavy for a telephoto zoom lens, but you'll feel its presence, especially on smaller cameras like the X-T3 and the camera we are performing the tests on, which is the X-H2S. The zoom ring is smooth and well damped, and this is subsequently also the unique aspect of it, pushing to zoom out, while being able to focus with that same ring. It's also incredibly well damped, requiring some force to zoom and focus, but it's smooth and consistent throughout, truly a testament to Canon's design and build quality. The aperture ring has half-stop clicks and produces quite a satisfying sound, which is often missing on modern-day optics. Be aware that this lens isn't weather-sealed, so take care in rough conditions. It doesn't extend when zooming, which is something I really wish modern lenses would do more often. This helps in case you wish to balance it on a gimbal, or just generally in terms of durability. Alongside this, it reduces front element wobble, which can be a real deal breaker for me sometimes. The filter thread size is 58mm, compatible with a range of filters, but you will most likely wish to utilise a step-up ring which could get in the way of the hood if you were lucky enough to get it with one. With a minimum focus distance of one2 meters, it isn't ideal for macro photography, however it does have a macro setting, but it only allows you to rotate the focus ring into that position when it's at 70mm. This reduces the focus distance to 0.44 meters. Its maximum aperture of f4 is decent, but not the fastest, meaning it's not ideal for low light conditions or achieving a super shallow depth of field. The minimum aperture of f32 can lead to diffraction, but we will see that in our optical performance test later on. The manual focus ring is smooth but doesn't offer high precision. It has a long throw, requiring quite a bit of rotation to go from infinity to the minimum focus distance. Quick, accurate focusing can be challenging, especially at longer focal lengths. It's just another one of those skills that our luxuries of the 21st century have degraded. The lens features a distance scale and a depth of field scale, which are useful for zone focusing or calculating hyperfocal distances. Lens breathing is present, noticeable in videos during focus pulls. Interestingly, the focal reducer doesn't seem to have much impact on this.
It isn't par focal, so you'll need to refocus after zooming, which is a bit of a shame, as you can achieve some pretty decent zooms as it's so well damped. Let's dive into the optical performance. All the testing was done on my Fuji X-H2S, and there are no in-camera corrections for this lens, but you can always clean up the image in post if you find this necessary, starting at 70mm. Without a focal reducer and set at f4.0, the sharpness is noticeably softer in the corners. This softness remains consistent even when stopping down to f5.6, though there's a slight increase in sharpness at the centre. However, the corners continue to appear blurry. When we stop down further to f8, there's an improvement in sharpness across the board, including the corners. But as we go down to f11, while sharpness sees a marginal increase, the corners don't show much change. At f16, diffraction begins to affect the image, impacting sharpness and contrast. Taking this down to f22 and beyond, diffraction becomes more pronounced, degrading the overall image quality. This is especially evident at f32, where the image appears significantly softer and the chromatic aberrations are less noticeable. Now, introducing the focal reducer at 70mm and f4. The centre of the image seems sharper compared to without the reducer, but chromatic aberration becomes more evident in the corners. As we stop down to f5.6 and f8, there's an improvement in centre sharpness but the corners suffer, with noticeable coloured fringing. Further stopping down to f11, sharpness improves slightly, but diffraction and chromatic aberrations remain in the corners. At f16, diffraction increasingly affects the image, and by f22 and f32, the overall image contrast and sharpness degrade significantly due to heavy diffraction, though chromatic aberrations and fringing persist in the corners. Zooming into 210mm without the focal reducer, the image displays significant purple fringing, something quite unusual for this lens. Stopping down to f5.6 improves sharpness a bit, but the corners remain soft. By f8, some fringing starts to disappear, and at f11, the purple fringing is gone, though it still lingers in the corners. At f16, the sharpness improves remarkably with minimal fringing, but at f22, diffraction again begins to creep in, affecting the overall image quality. Adding the focal reducer at this focal length and aperture results in less purple fringing, turning somewhat blue.
stopping down through f5.6, f8 and f11, we see improvements in sharpness and a reduction in fringing. However, by f16, diffraction starts to affect the image again, and at f22 and f32, it becomes heavily pronounced, though fringing is nearly eliminated in the centre of the image. Regarding aberrations at 70mm f4.0, there's no significant vignetting or distortion. Adding the focal reducer introduces some barrel distortion and vignetting, which only disappears at f8. At 210mm there's minimal pincushion distortion, and the image quality doesn't degrade noticeably with the focal reducer. In terms of bokeh quality, without the focal reducer, there's a slight swirly effect, but it's not particularly pronounced. And adding the focal reducer enhances the swirly effect, though it's still not as noticeable as on some other lenses, like the Canon 50mm. Zooming to 210mm with the focal reducer, the background has some character, but remains subtly busy. The IBIS of the Fuji X-H2S will only really make a difference in stationary shots, so keep that in mind. I doubt anyone really would want to walk and film with this lens, although it could reduce some micro jitters if you would want to use it on a gimbal. To sum up, the Canon FD70 to 210mm is quite a beautiful design, and sports some pretty decent optical quality, especially considering its age. It was a joy to shoot with it, however I doubt I'll be using it much as my preference often lies with 30mm primes, but it's worth checking out if you're looking for something different. If you like this video you might also enjoy the next one about the Canon FD 50mm f1.8, a superb prime with beautiful bokeh. When you pair it with the focal reducer, it closely mirrors a 35mm lens, which is one of my favourite focal lengths to shoot with. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully see you in the next one.